Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my dining room. Today we are finishing up the desk. Yes, it is finally time to finish it up and bring it upstairs and it is in place. So this is one of two and uh, yes, I'm, I'm excited. So enough talking, let's dive in and finish this thing. It's finally time to finish this thing. Hey, I'm getting excited. So last time we uh, filled all the bug holes with epoxy and I found it much easier to scrape them off with a cabinet scraper or card scraper. Uh, you'll get these little tracks if the card scraper isn't completely sharp, but it will take it down really nice and quickly. Then you can sharpen it up and come back and smooth them out. Now, once you do that, you're going to find that there's other little tiny holes from bubbles in the epoxy. And uh, I, I could come in with more epoxy, but I find it actually better to come in with some of this uh, tinted CA glue. And that will actually uh, fill the holes a little bit better and it can get into some of those smaller spaces. Um, I have done it with uh, more liquid epoxy like the, the thick set, um, but I find the CA works a little bit better. Now, I wanted to do a little bit of uh, carving inlay in this. So we're going to carve the logo into the center of the desk and then inlay it with the epoxy coloring. Uh, so I have the paper logo that I have and then I have some uh, uh, carbon paper that transfers underneath. And then using the tip of a, uh, a pin, we can come through and transfer all the marks. Oh, sorry, it's out of focus. I had my camera up for an odd. So there we go. Now we have our lines transferred over and we can carve it. So I'm going to grab a V tool and this will allow me to go around the outside and uh, create the perimeter. So we're going to tap this around. Now, this may scare a lot of people, but it's one of those things that once you've done it a couple times, it, it really becomes fairly easy. And if you're just tapping along, it goes pretty well. Every five or six minutes so of work, I'm going to come back and sharpen the gouge. Uh, it just makes everything that much easier. And yes, you can go straight through the epoxy. Uh, this is one of those steps that is incredibly fun um, once it all starts coming out. For the lettering, I'm going to do some chip carving and I'm going to make sure that the camera is completely out of focus because that always helps things. <laughs> so I'm just going to be chopping at an angle from one side, chopping from an angle at the other side, and making them meet in the bottom. You know, I have to come into the little detail and I find that using this uh, double bevel um, skewed uh, chisel actually works really well for getting in there. So for filling it, I'm going to go back to using the, uh, the Total Boat, uh, the, uh, the high performance. Uh, it has a nice thickness to it and you can easily add dyes to it and I have a whole selection of dyes and colors that I've used. Um, and so I just grabbed some that were the, the colors I was looking for. So one of the W's is blue, the circle around the outside is blue, and then the other W will be black. And so for that, I'm going to pour all the one side and then I'm going to come through and scrape it all off. And that will allow me to then come in and carve it out. And I love these curls that come off of epoxy. There's just something about these really light, fluffy curls. Um, yeah, it's happy. <laughs> but once we get that all scraped off, we can transfer again. So I made sure to tape it in place so it was in the exact same place both times. And then we can come through and transfer the lines for the other W. Because uh, I want one color and then the other color. If I make them both the same colors, then for some reason it looks like triple X. And I don't want that. So we're going to do the same thing again, uh, chopping in from both sides, doing a little bit of a chip carving on the lettering. Just using a, a straight low angle uh, chisel makes this very, very quick and easy. And then we'll come again with that little skewed double bevel chisel to get into the lettering. Uh, for the very top of the lettering, I find it easy to come across with the V-tool and score the top. It gets me down in close and then I can clean it up with the, the small, small detail tool. Again with the uh, high performance and we're going to add a little bit of a black powder to this one. Uh, this is actually like a charcoal um, pigment that I, I got a while ago. And it tended to do the uh, the deal right here. So wee, look at that. Now we can fill this up, let it set, and then come back through and scrape off the black. Hey, a long run for a short slide. I just want to make sure that I come in and I, I work it down into all the gaps. I don't want any holes in here. And once I let it sit for a little while, I'll come in with the torch and pop all the bubbles. Uh, this gets most of them. It doesn't get all of them. And uh, you'll see there are a few little bubbles that come out. Um, but once we scrape it down, then we're left with the, the logo in line. And I really like how that came out. Now let's get on to some of the last little final details. On um, the corners here, I wanted to cut those off at 45 degrees um, just to round it off. Because if there's a sharp corner on the desk, it just doesn't look as good. But putting a little bit of a, a large chamfer on here works well. So we're going to mark it down and then slice it off. Just like that. It's really that simple. <laughs> it's one of the fun things about hand saws. Uh, if you can see a line, you can cut to it. There really isn't that much to it. It's, uh, it's all about the, the saw control and, and knowing how to do it. 
Once you get that done, you can make just about any cut, and any angle is a cut. Just take the edge off with a block plane, and then we want to chamfer the top corners on the ends and these little edges here. We rounded the front live edge uh, last time, but this time we want to come through with the block plane and bring these down into a nice heavy chamfer. Uh, I like the, the detail of the chamfer then turning into the rounded edge on the live edge. It really uh, brings it out. Some of the, the, the plane does work well across the epoxy as long as it is sharp, but if you do get any chip out, just bring a card scraper in and you can clean that up nicely. Now I wanted to do some penetrating epoxy because on one of these slabs there were a few uh, punky, slight, slightly soft spots um, that I wanted, to, I wanted to keep the look of them, but I didn't want my fingernail driving into it. And so we're going to come in with this penetrating epoxy and coat into a couple of these spots. And just let it soak up as much as it wants, come in and put a little bit more and it'll soak that up and you put in a little more um, until it just stops soaking it up and uh, then you can come in with this and scrape off the excess and it is ready to go for finish and then everything inside just has a little bit of that on it and not a problem so we can come and scrape it off smooth off the surface and now that soft spot is just as hard as the rest and ready to go now the last thing is the the scraping leaves the uh, the epoxy looking okay um, but it won't leave it glass clean and so I have this micro mesh pad that I can come through and we can polish it down But even the micro mesh pads won't get it um, to the point where it's glass clear um, And this particular epoxy isn't going to get 100% perfectly glass clear at three inches thick um, and, But it will get close enough that you can see all the way through it So I'm going to go through the whole micro mesh set and then I'm going to bring in my Yorkshire grit. I really like this stuff because it polishes down. And it starts with a, a slightly higher grit. And the more you buff it, the grit gets smaller and smaller. And it, it polishes more and more and more. It does take a lot of elbow grease to work this in. Uh, but you're basically polishing it down in. And so you just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And then you might need to add a little bit more. But eventually it comes out and you get this beautiful shine. And you can see down into it. And it was kind of cool with the lettering. Because I left enough of the pigment that you can look down through it. And you can actually see the chip carving down underneath rather than just seeing the inlaid color. So you get the inlaid color, but you can also look into it and see the, the chip marks underneath. For the finish, I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat. I used this on the table, and it has been withstanding for over a year now. And I really, really like it. It gives a nice matte finish. You can't actually see the finish. It looks like it's just, it looks just like boiled in seed oil and paste wax. It has a very, very raw feel to it. And I absolutely love how easy it is. You just smear it on, let the wood soak up as much as it wants, and then wipe off the excess. Um, just like 15 minutes in between, then let it cure, and you're good to go. It gives you a hard, protective finish, but it doesn't look like there's any finish on there. And it brings out the color in the oak just like linseed oil does. It is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal finish that I, I'm, I'm in love with. Uh, but the nice thing is you can just smear it onto the wood, slide it around, and then let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes or so until it's fully soaked in. Uh, it really doesn't take that long. And then you can grab a rag and wipe it off. And you wipe it off and basically polish the surface down. And you're left with this really nice, clean, smooth surface that feels good, looks good, and is protective, but still matte, and you can still see all of the grain structure in the wood. Uh, it's kind of the, the best of both worlds. Um, if, I, if I don't do this, my, normally my next step is to go with a wipe on poly, because that you can, you can put how much on there you want, what type of sheen you want. Uh, but this is just so quick and easy. Let it sit for a while, and then here we grab a rag, and we come back and we wipe it off, and then polish the wood down, and it's done. Um, literally an hour or two later, you can do this. So I actually applied this on, and then later that day brought it upstairs. And I just, I love how smooth the finish is, but there's really no gloss to the wood itself. Um, this makes me very, very happy, and it feels fantastic. It's one of the things I love with my desk, with my, uh, my dining room table, is being able to sit at it every day and, and feeling that down. Uh, it was a little bit more tricky with the, the base because uh, I glued it together, but the nice thing about it is wherever you can work the oil into, uh, the hard wax into, it, uh, it goes in pretty well. Uh, so Rubio Monocoat is a, a hard wax finish, um, or there's a bunch of different terms for it, a waxed oil finish. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it, it looks very much like a boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish. It has similar properties to it other than it's far, more, far, far more protective than boiled linseed oil. I'm going to be putting some felt pads on this because it's going to be going onto the wood floor. If you haven't seen the video, I have a video on installing the oak floor upstairs, um, as well as the trim 
all the way around the house. Um, and you can see a little bit in the corner of the dining room table. Now we can start putting this all together. And this is where the, the fun comes apart because the, the legs are intended to come apart from the back. So if you need to travel, it, the whole thing can, you can break down and, uh, and go away. The joints are slightly loose so that you can pound them together with your hand, but then they're held in tight with the steel pins that we had earlier. So we can fit those in there. Uh, they are a little bit more difficult to, to pound into place because the, the front arch is in there. But with some you know, creative pounding, uh, they go in pretty easily. And so we can drive those in, and I really like the look on this. I wasn't quite sure how I would like with this L shape. Um, the last ones I had were, were a U shape with, two, with a double pin. But this one came out really well. And now time to take the slab upstairs. And because everyone is at their own house, I had to take this one up by myself. Thankfully, it was only half the slab, and it's a little bit less than 200 pounds, so it's, it's not, uh, not that much. It's um, comparatively easy to, com to carry up as opposed to the tabletop that I had earlier. Plus, it's only 8 foot long as opposed to the 11 foot long top on the other one. And then it just sits on top, and we just locate those two pins that we had earlier. They pop down into place and it is there. Uh, that's all that holds it in place. Uh, that way it can still expand and contract as needed and those pins will keep it from moving around and gravity will do the rest. And let me tell you, gravity will do a fine job of it. And I am just blown away with how this came out. I mean, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> really, really excited for this and looking forward to using it for years to come. So there you have it. Yes, it is all done and I'm incredibly happy. I now have the plans available for this desk, uh, for the bending and all that. If you want to see those, the link to that is down below. Also, if you want to see the build I did for the dining room table, it's very similar but much, much, much larger. Uh, I have that as well. I'll try and leave a link to that down below as well. Now I have two of these ready to go and next week we'll be doing the compilation video where we put everything together and, and show the whole thing in one video rather than having it split up into sections. I am I'm in I'm just I'm happy with how this came out. So I'm, I'm excited with this. This one is for the kids The other one will actually go downstairs and uh, be for the uh, for me and my wife in my office. So I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below. Also, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason that this channel is here. I know I say that a lot, but I, I mean it. Without Patreon, uh, Wood by Right would not be here. So thank you for everyone who's supporting the channel and allowing me to continue making content like this. I think the next project is actually going to be making a set of drawers that will go underneath this. And then I'm hoping to make a stand to go above that I can set a printer on, a few other things. And I have some other ideas for making this more than just a desk with legs. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. What would you like to see in the future of this? So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.